Well, hello there, people of the internet. So, about a year ago, I made a video about this piece of crap. This my old laptop uh, that used to be my daily driver for quite a while. And in that video, I kind of ranted a bit and complained about its, about its performance. But some people actually thought that was a review about that laptop. It wasn't really about. But that actually inspired me to make this video. Some games that will run on this piece of crap. And really good and fun games. See, you have really high-end desktop PCs. You have mid-range, humble gaming PCs. You have low-end, older gaming systems. Then you have this. This is what I'm calling the ultimate Potatotron 9000. So if you didn't catch my last video, this laptop is rocking a Core 2 Duo at 2GHz. It has 2GB of RAM and a 4500RPM hard drive. Really, really slow. Again, I made an entire video about this laptop. You can go check it. I'll link it somewhere. So what games can it run? Well, just to give you a general idea, any game that came before 2004-ish, it can run on really low settings. I mean, it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. It's an Intel Media Accelerator 965, I believe it's 965, I don't know. But there are some even newer games that will run pretty well on this laptop. So here we go. The first game I want to mention is Factorio. Now, I actually talked about this game a while ago and it's really fun. I sunk so much hours into it. It's definitely not a game for everybody, but the main point of the game is you are stranded, you are alone on an alien planet. You have nothing but a pickaxe. Your mission, build a rocket, build a satellite, put that satellite in a rocket and launch that rocket with a satellite to space. Once you have done that, rinse and repeat. There are many different ways of playing the game. Peaceful mode, non-peaceful mode, rich resources, non-rich resources, etc. And of course you have multiplayer. Now keep in mind, on this laptop I got 32 FPS on the stock resolution. And there are no graphic settings, the only thing you can turn on and off are smoke and clouds and st small stuff like that. However, it's mostly CPU taxing because the map is technically infinite, it's generated as you go. And the map, your factory tends to get really really big. And I have tested on a small map, I haven't really tested on a giant map, I don't have time. And I also tested an older 0.14 version because I'm running Windows 32 bit on this. And latest version won't run on this laptop because it requires only 64 bit systems. But you will be able to run it, that's the point. Next game I want to talk about is my favorite childhood, well, in general, my favorite, one of my favorite games, Need for Speed Underground 2. Now this game came out in 2004 and really does push this laptop. On a resolution of 800 by 400 on a resolution of 800 by 600 and around medium to low settings, you can get around 30 FPS. Again, it is playable. I have played a lot of Need for Speed Underground 2 on this laptop. It is playable. However, I do expect frame drops, especially when you have a lot of smoke or particles on your screen. But if you turn everything off, all the derails, lights, smoke, all that fun stuff, if you turn that off, you will get a higher FPS and a much more smooth, more consistent FPS. And I don't really have much to say about the game itself. I mean, it's a no Need for Speed game. You can tune and rise the hell out of your Civic or make a sleeper, but you won't get any stars for that. But it's an incredibly fun game I played when I was five, six, seven years old. It's definitely a game worth checking for your old potato PC. Now, another game which is even older, actually a bit older than me, Half-Life. Half-Life came out in 1998 and I came out in 1999. Really, there isn't much to say about this game. This is considered one of the most successful and the best franchises ever in the gaming industry. So I don't really have to talk much about this game, but when it comes to resolution, I don't actually remember the resolution. I have more than decent graphics, you can expect more than 60 FPS. However, when there are a lot of explosions and generally a lot of stuff going on, the FPS does dip to the single digits for a very, very short time, but again, it's nothing, you know, it's nothing game breaking, it's just a minor hiccup. Oh yeah, if you want to continue playing Half-Life, you can play Half-Life 2, both episodes and the original Half-Life 2 on this laptop. Unfortunately for life of me, it won't run. I played it on this laptop last summer, but now it just won't run, it just it stops working immediately. From what I read, it's a common issue, I don't know how to fix it right now. But I did finish the entire Half-Life franchise on this laptop and on 800 by 600 on minimum graphics you can get around 25 to 30 FPS and again FPS dips when there's a lot of stuff going on. 
Oh yeah, and the original Portal, you can also play the original Portal on this because they, as far as I know, they use the same engine as Half-Life 2. Another great game is Age of Empires 2. Now, this really isn't a game for everybody, not everybody likes strategy games, but if you do, Age of Empires 2 is a great game. I actually, when I was benchmarking the game, I actually spent like half an hour, an hour just playing the game because I forgot I was benchmarking it. And that's why I got 117 FPS on average with the graphics maxed out. So, you won't have any issues, but you will have a lot of fun if you love it. And last but not least, the game that actually made me cry, Pro probably the only game that made me cry, it came out relatively recently, is Undertale. Now, Connor, it's, it's, I know that a lot of you don't like Undertale, mainly because of the fan base, and I do understand the fan base is really awful, but trust me, the game, I, I again, made me cry, it's such an awesome game, rich story, rich characters, the original soundtrack is so good, there are so many remixes, there are so many artworks, it's an awesome game, again, made me cry at the end, the only game that did that to me, so it's only 10 euros on Steam, definitely worth checking out. I won't spoil the game much, but it's a story rich game, and you decide how you want to play, do you want to go a pacifist route or a genocide route, it's up to you, but trust me, don't do genocide route, at least not in your first go, just don't, 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 don't do it, okay, don't do it, good. Oh yeah, and I did try some other newer games, like Overcooked or Monaco. Now, they are really simple games, but for example, on Overcooked, I got like 10 FPS on the minimum settings, so not really playable, same goes for Monaco. But something I didn't fully mention is emulators. Now, PlayStation emulator or any other console, DOSBox will work pretty much perfectly on this laptop. So if you're looking at a machine just for emulation, this laptop really isn't a bad choice. So, there you have it. Even if you have a crap potato PC like me lying somewhere in your grandmother's attic, you can still have some fun with it and still play some games. So if you have any games of your own I didn't mention, drop them down in the comments below and help someone else. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I do have more videos coming out, but school is kind of in the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing ya. Peace.